Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Theater Talks with Scott. And you guys, I have had just the most beautiful night of theater tonight at the uh, Renaissance Theater in Orlando. I think it's called rentheater.com. I'll put the uh, website in in my uh, notes. Um, what a great night. Um, I, years ago, my friend Jan Sheldon told me about, and I'm pretty sure this was like 2017, 2018. Well, I know it was. Um, she told me about a show she had seen about Josephine Baker. Um, and it was a one woman show, a cabaret burlesque, uh, storytelling show, um, that was start that was in, in, she had seen in Orlando at Fringe, um, starring Tamisha Harris, uh, who was, who I saw tonight. Um, and the show was created by Tamisha Harris, Harris, and I have to look at my notes, uh, because I looked it up. Also, it was created by, uh, Tamisha in partnership with Todd Kimbrough and Michael, Marinaccio, Marinaccio, I, I probably just butchered your name and I'm so sorry, Michael. Um, so they created this show and my friend Jan saw it. I was in New York and it was playing off Broadway. It, it was at the Fringe. It started in 2016 and it played a lot of Fringe festivals and won all kinds of awards. And so it was at the Soho Playhouse uh, in about 20, well, it was, it was 2018, 17 or 18, you know, anyway. But I remember it was there and Jan Sheldon said, you've got to go see it. Well, I only had a couple of openings and I couldn't get tickets. Um, and I really tried because I, I've been wanting to go to the Soho Playhouse. I still haven't. Um, I don't think. Anyway, um, so I didn't get to see it. Well, it's playing right now at the Wren in Orlando. Um, Tamisha Harris is phenomenal. I mean, wow. And I'm going to talk more about that later. But So it's the story of Josephine Baker. And I want to take just a couple minutes, if you don't know who Josephine Baker was, um, girl, go, just do a Google. I, I Just do a Wikipedia or whatever, I'm sure. I, so this one, I was say, Josephine Baker, I, I have been uh, fascinated with the Josephine Baker story and who Josephine Baker is forever. Um, a number of years ago, um, I was going to New York and my friend, uh, John Jury, well, actually his wife, Joanne, uh, I, she knew I was going to New York and she was surprising her husband, John Jury. John is the city manager in Tavares. Um, and at the time I was at the chamber and, uh, she said, I'm surprising John with a trip to New York. Come have dinner with us. We're going to John's favorite restaurant in Manhattan, Shay Josephine. And so of course I had to look it up. Shea Josephine is a restaurant inspired by Josephine Baker. And you walk in the restaurant and it's all, and cause she lived in France almost all her life. Um, and she loved Paris and she was definitely, uh, I mean, she was a Francophile before there was a word Francophile. Okay. I mean, uh, she loved it. In fact, she said, um, that Paris was her adopted city and France, her adopted country. Um, Kind of like Gertrude Stein, right? I didn't think about that. Anyway, um, so I met them there at this restaurant. And so it's still there. It's in Manhattan. It's a great place to eat. You want really good French food, great cocktails. I don't do the cocktails anymore, but I still love the... And, and they have a baby grand piano, but it's covered with all of the, the feathers and headdresses and great portraits of her. It was actually founded. It was started by one of her sons. Uh, so anyway, Josephine Baker, born in Missouri, early start of the uh, 20th century, like early 1900s, and black, she's black. Uh, she was the first African-American international superstar. Yeah, okay. Uh, she was this huge star. So she grew up poor. Um, she was married twice before the age of 16. I mean, she lived this life. Um, and she wound up, it, she did a show in New York. She was a dancer and a singer. And she got taken to France and boom. Because at that time in Paris, they did not discriminate and she was not having the discrimination. She was not having the segregation. She was not doing it. When she came back to try to, as she's a huge star in France and she comes back to the States and she got booed and she got 
chased out or I don't know if chased out is right. There's a lot of about Josephine Baker. It depends on what story you read and what biography you read and who, because there's a lot of unknowns. Um, she was very good friends with uh, Grace Kelly, Princess Grace. Um, in fact, she stayed after she lost money and stuff as a result of the war. She was a spy in World War II for the French Renaissance. Um, she was a spy, and she was recognized huge by that after, of course, the war. Um, she was friends with Ernest Hemingway, uh, maybe more than friends. She was friends with Picasso, maybe more than friends. She was friends with Frida, the, the great female painter, and definitely more than friends. She had five or six marriages. Um, she couldn't have children. Uh, or she tried to have children. And again, there's different things that say she had multiple miscarriages. She had one. She chose not to have it. She had a hysterectomy. You know, who cares? The fact is that she adopted children and she adopted 12. And they were all different races. And she raised them all. This is one thing I remember. She raised them all as different religions. So some of the children were raised Catholic and some were raised Buddhist or Muslim, you know, Protestant. Um, because, as she called it her, the Rainbow, I always mess it up, not Rainbow Brigade, um, Rainbow Tribe. Um, that's what I was telling my friends that were with me at the show tonight. I'm like, yeah, they were called the Rainbow Brigade. And then I said, no, that's not right. It was something else. And then in the show tonight, she says, my Rainbow Tribe. Um, they were 12 adopted children, her baker's dozen. Um, and one of them founded the restaurant in New York City that's still there. Um, it's across from the Lori Beecham Theater. It's on uh, 42nd Street. Is it 9th or 10th? I can't remember, but look it up. Shea Josephine. Fabulous restaurant. Go see. Anyway, so my point is Josephine Baker had this extraordinary life. This much larger than life person um, that was just amazing. For today, her life would be amazing. Um, she went with Dr. King for the March on Washington and, and gave a speech. and was very supportive of civil rights. Um, she was just this amazing person. So the show is a one woman show. Tamisha Harris. She may be one of the most talented human beings I've ever had the pleasure to watch live. Oh my God, you guys, because she sings and there's songs that she sounds like um, that some of the recordings that we have of. Uh, Josephine Baker, but th there's emotion and she, she's great. She dances. She's she's athletic. Her athleticism. And let me tell you what, because she was a burlesque. Okay, so this is an adult show. You guys, this is an adult show. There is disrobing that happens. We don't see everything. It's tasteful, but it's an adult show. Um, and so moving. Um, and, but the costume, she changes costumes all throughout the show as she's telling stories and or singing and reliving things. And you forget that it was an actress doing the part. I, I believed it was, I was with Josephine. I really was. Um, she just embodied everything because I've been a Josephine fan for decades. And I feel like I saw Josephine Baker live tonight. Tamisha Harris is, is just phenomenal. She had a lot of her gowns and outfits were strapless, um, halter or strapless, and she'd have her arms with ice, and, and I'm like, that that woman's got guns, okay? And she had muscle thighs, and, and she'd do this athleticism and these dances and splits and all of this, just amazing. And yet she's an actor, and she's telling stories. Um, and there were times that she told stories that were just, when she talked about having a miss, so the story that she tells in this show is that the, during the war there was an accident and she had to have a miss, she had a miscarriage and had to have a hysterectomy. And as she's telling us that, you can feel the pain and the and the the sorrow in in this woman as she tells us about what that experience was like um, when she relives. Uh, in front of us, coming back to New York and and being in this restaurant where they pretend to serve her, but they never bring the food or the drink and because she's black. And and the the pain in her that just reaches down to the toes. Um, when she sang um, the Bob Dylan song, 
the times they are changing. And when she's saying that, that was a part where she was talking about coming over and walk and uh, the the march on Washington with Martin Luther King, and she's singing that that song, the the Dylan song. The emotion and the power, and, and what the song meant, what the words meant, was so clear. Tamisha Harris is just a brilliant performer. Um, I, I highly encourage you to see this show. It, it was moving. It made you feel good. It left on a very positive, upbeat. Um, the, the dances she does, the dance with her shadow at the end was just... I, I, there are times that I am so moved, because I get emotional. Y'all know that, right? There are times that I'm so moved that uh, tears aren't coming because the emotion is just so real. And that was several moments in the show tonight. Um, and then the joy that I was feeling uh, because what I got out of it was even though there was a lot of challenges and hardships in Josephine Baker's life, she found the joy in performing and dancing in her children, in her relationships, in her friends, in loving women and men and children and loving theater and loving dance. She found that joy despite all of the shit. And I just, I, I loved it. You have chances to see it. It is still playing at the Wren um, in Orlando through March 19th, I believe. Yes, the 19th. Um, I may go see it again next weekend. I may go see it um, on the 17th. You know, St. Patrick's Day used to be one of my favorite holidays because it was all about drinking, you know. Well, I don't do that anymore, so I'm not going to be celebrating St. Patrick's Day. So it sounds like the perfect way would be for me to go see Josephine again. Um, I'm not kidding. She comes out in the audience and she plays with the audience and interacts. And the focus that that requires for an actor, for a performer, to ha know their script, know their story, know their songs, their dance, their movements, the tech, the lights, all of that, and yet have the freedom, be so secure to really engage with the audience and interact. And that's improvisational. And she comes out in the audience a lot of times. Um, and it, it's really, uh, you're like, oh God, oh God, she's right there. Um, just really, Tamisha Harris is a superstar. Girl, you are a superstar. Um, I'm going to have to start following her. So anyway, so the show is going to be till the 19th. But then again, at the end of April, it's playing in Tampa at the Stras Center. I'm going to put the website. The website uh, is josephinetheplay.com. I'll put that in my notes. Um, and then they're going to be in Canada. And then you can follow where they're going to be. Um, truly a fun, beautiful night of theater. It's 90-minute show, so there's no intermission. Um... Be sure and go to the restroom beforehand because, I mean, I'm sitting there going, oh, I got to pee. But I was not getting up no matter what. Let me tell you what. I wasn't. What a beautiful night um, of theater. Thank you to the Wren. Thank you to Tamisha Harris, to Michael and Todd who created the show. All the musicians. There were live musicians there. I don't have their names, but they were fantastic. And the tech, the lighting was beautiful. I really found nothing wrong with the show. I really found nothing, nothing to critique. It was just beautiful. Thank you for a wonderful night of theater. I, I encourage all of my theater fans to go see it. If you're not in the Central Florida area or and you can't go to Canada, follow them. Look for them. Follow them on Instagram. Um, it's actually, I think there it's... Well, if you look up Josephine the Play, you, if you go to the website, you can find the Instagram because the Instagram is actually... A dynamite lunchbox, something like that, which is, I think, their production company. Um, I'm following them now because, uh, wow. All right. That was a great night of theater. Thanks for sticking with me for another Theater Talks with Scott. And I will see you at the theater. Bye.